Hello, welcome to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes Videos. My name is Chris. We do all kinds of stuff here on koi ponds and water gardens, aquatic plants and fish and pond filtration, the whole bit. So if you're new here, please um, check out my videos. I've got a ton of stuff online here for you guys on YouTube. So uh, please check it out. I also have a website called pondscapesandmore.com. Um, please check that out. Um, I have a ton of pictures and videos in there of jobs I've done in the past. I have all kinds of blogs and reviews. I have um, featured products that we're looking at. I have affiliate links. You can buy a bunch of products off the website. And I also have a whole section on feeding and attracting wild birds because uh, that's something that's really popular as well and it's certainly fun. Um, so um, today's topic we are talking about um, the different types of rock and gravel that can be used in construction of a koi pond or water garden. Um, so we're going to look at some different types. Um, now depending on where you are, right, you might not have the same rock available in your part of the world that I have right here. Um, however, um, I'm sure you have something that is very similar. It might have a different name, it might be a slightly different color, but it can be used the same way, okay? So, you know, um, I just want to show you some pictures of different types of rock here, and you can kind of, you know, adapt it to your area, okay? Um, now, first and foremost, okay, I want to tell you, do not use lava rock, okay? The volcanic stone, um, it's kind of a pretty popular stone because it's lightweight, okay? Because it's very porous. Um, so a lot of people say, well, I don't want to pick up those big boulders. They, they weigh a ton. I'm going to use this lava rock here. And I mean, it's you know, big boulders weigh nothing. True. However, they are very coarse. Um, if you handle lava rocks without gloves, you can really cut up your hands, okay? Um, it's actually really, really almost dangerous, I want to say. Um, I've had, you know, lava rock at some jobs that I've removed, you know, away from waterfalls and ponds and stuff. And I'll tell you, if you just so much as, you know, reach and, and scrape your arm on the side of a piece of lava rock, you're going to get all cut up. All right, I did. Um, your hands get 20 million little slices and slits in it from, from the rock. It's nasty stuff, okay? It's lightweight, <laughs> but it really is sharp and coarse, all right? Um, now, if you put this in your pond, and your fish are, you know, laying eggs or they're, you know, they rub against it, they're going to get all cut up, like badly cut up, okay? So definitely do not use lava rock, all right? Okay, so <laughs> we have different choices, okay? We have smaller stones, we have um, formal um, rock like bluestone that can be cut into squares. Um, I don't like using brick. I don't like using um, pavers, all right? Um, the pavers, the concrete stone, the concrete um, rock, um, what I found in time is that I guess with the concrete, it does, does absorb the water in the pond. And as you have a freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw, that concrete starts to deteriorate. So after time, a lot of ponds that are built with like the concrete uh, retaining stones, like the paver retaining stone, wall stone things, um, start to deteriorate, okay? And it starts to crumble. Um, not gonna say that's gonna happen in two years, you know, but in 10, 15 years time, I, I've seen it happen. Um, so stick with natural stone as much as you can, okay? Um, I have uh, seen some ponds built um, with brick on the top, like as a coping, a brick face coping. Um, and that seems to have lasted better than the concrete paver stone kind of thing, okay? Um, but natural stone has been around for millions of years and it'll probably outlive us. So <laughs> there shouldn't be any problem using natural stone in your pond. 
Um, you may want to stay away from like a sandstone kind of thing as well, right? Because it's not really a durable rock. Um, something, you know, limestone, granite kind of things like this are, are stronger um, and they're going to last a lot longer. Um, so, ideas for you, okay? Smaller stones or bigger boulders, okay? Or a mixture, all right? Everything can be done. I have a lot of clients, I do a lot of ponds out of what we call a field stone, which is this, these smaller stones here you see behind me. Um, they can be stacked up nice and neat, neat, neatly, and yet while the pond has a natural kind of freeform shape, um, using these stones around the edge of the pond kind of gives it a little neat, a little more formal, um, appearance so you know everybody's different okay i i do ponds for people and i you know do some ponds out of these small stones and we stack them all up around the pond and make nice clean neat walls and people love it and then i'll show that picture to somebody else and i'll say oh i hate all those loose little little stones laying around i want big boulders okay everybody's different the smaller stones are nice to work with because it makes a nice neat job, okay? However, it's not always that natural looking, okay? Um, sometimes I like to do jobs where it looks like the rocks, you know, have fallen there. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's all mixture of sizes. Now, when using big boulders, big boulders are, are awesome. But keep in mind that the bigger the boulders are that you're putting next to each other, chances are the bigger are the holes and the gaps in between those rocks, okay? So sometimes a mixture of smaller stones to go in between the cracks and crevices of the big boulders works out really well, all right? Um, <laughs> Also, uh, keep in mind the scale of the pond and the waterfalls and stuff that you're building, okay? If you're building a pond that's, you know, five foot by seven foot, something like that, right? I don't think you're going to be putting big gigantic boulders down in, in place around that. It's going to look a little funny, right? You know, when your boulders are bigger than your water surface is, all right? Um, so kind of keep in mind the scale. Now these flat field stones that I use, they, they are available in a bunch of different sizes. They come on pallets and I can get them, you know, the small stacking stone on a pallet. They have like a little larger sized stone. Then it comes into what they call like garden path stones, which are larger, you know, uh, anywhere from a foot to two and a half, three foot round flat pieces, okay? And they get bigger and bigger. So I can get, you know, one or even two pallets, two, I mean, two stones on a pallet. They get big. Um, and then you can build some of these like big waterfalls and stuff with them, okay? So it all blends in if you buy, you know, a bunch of different sizes and put it all together, all right? Um, if you have seen some of my other videos on building ponds, um, I, I talk about how I use basically, I want to say, two, um, two walls of rock to build my edges, okay? I dig a shelf inside the pond, uh, maybe, you know, five, six inches underwater, um, and I put all my rock on, on that shelf in the pond, okay? I bring the liner up behind that rock, all right, so all my rock's here. I bring the liner up behind it, and then I back it with, with rock, okay, behind the liner. And what that does is it keeps the liner off the ground so no mud and dirt and silt and sand, whatever, can wash into the pond during like a storm. So my liner is up. So when I put rock in front and I put rock in back and then we kind of cap it and cover it and naturalize the top, um, I, I blend in all different sizes of stones, okay? So I could do some smaller stone in the front, bring my liner up, and then put a big one in the back, all right? And then move forward a little bit, 
you know, put a big one in the pond and then some smaller ones in the back, right? You can mix it all up. So it's, so it's, it's following the form of the pond, but it's kind of giving it, you know, a natural shape, you know, a big stone, some small stuff, you know, a medium sized one and a big one and then some more small. Mix it all up, okay? Be creative. There's no, um, <laughs> there's no pattern, okay? It's not like putting down papers and you gotta put, okay, this piece and this piece and this piece, and then you know, this piece, this. No, it's just, you're putting together a big puzzle, okay? So everything and anything can work. Just make it so it looks natural and it's flowing, you know? Um, just depends on how you wanna build the pond, okay? You know, you can be really creative. Um, so there's, you know, this natural field stone, all right? There's also what we call moss rock, which is basically, uh, it's a really hard, heavy <laughs> limestone, basically. Um, they're more of a gray, a um, little bit of tan color in them, little bluish gray color, right? Um, and they can come in huge, big, large pieces. Um, I've done a lot of work with these. Now, Again, okay, it's nice to go to the quarry and pick out large boulders and say, ah, I like that one and this one and that one and I want to use that one and this one, okay? But when I do there, do go and I buy all the stone, I try to, you know, pick out pieces that I want and I pick out all my big, bigger, larger pieces and a whole mix of smaller, medium ones and then as they're loading up my truck, my trailer, I walk around and I pick up all little chunks, just little chunks, all, you know, crazy little pieces, small stuff, some, you know, like this and all different little pieces. And I'm throwing all these extra little pieces in, in my truck trailer as well, okay? Um, all those little pieces I help to use fill in the gaps. So a lot of times, again, you know, big boulders, big gaps in between them, okay? I like to cement everything in as well, all right? Uh, all my waterfalls, my stream beds, I, I'm using concrete, all right? So uh, all that concrete in between, um, sometimes it's nice to stuff a small stone in, inside a, a big, you know, gaping hole <laughs> and then concrete around it, right? So it's not all, some, all concrete, but we have some rock in there as well. So a lot of the smaller pieces I pick up. And then sometimes I'll even get a palette of that field stone that is more gray color, right? Sometimes some are more gray, some are a little more reddish brown color. So I'll look for the more gray tan kind of colors and I'll mix that in as well into my moss rock. Okay, so we can blend the different types of rock, you know, it's not a problem at all. Um, I just don't like blending different colors of rock, okay? I don't want all, you know, gray moss rock around and then put like red stones all around it, all right? We don't want to do that, all right? Kind of keep it all the same kind of color. And once it's all blended in together, it'll look beautiful, all right? Um, so, I mean, there's all different kinds of boulders, all right? Um, I do like to use um, cement on the big boulders in my pond when I'm using the boulders around the border. As I said before, I build that ledge inside the pond, you know, at four to six inches underwater, okay? Um, sometimes if I'm using the big boulders, I will put a nice little bead of cement down all around that edge and set the boulder on this on I mean on the concrete, all right? The purpose of that it does two things. One, it holds that boulder in place once, you know, once it hardens, right? Um, especially if the boulders are round, all right? I don't want to put a big big round boulders around the edge of my pond. And who knows, a, a kid, you know, a little kid comes running around and jumps on the rocks or, or even an adult, somebody might come out to your pond and just, you know, put their leg up on a rock and stand up on it. You don't know and you don't want it to roll and fall, okay? So a nice bead of concrete all around, set those big boulders in, man, and they're not going anywhere. And it's nice and tight and secure and it kind of tightens everything up together. All right, outside the pond, you don't need concrete, right? But on the ledge in the pond, I like to set them in, in concrete. All right, um, 
talking about round boulders, okay? So moss rock and, and some other natural stone, uh, you know, field stone boulders, the big, big boulders can come in all different shapes and sizes, okay? And they're typically not round. Might be roundish in shape, but they'll have flat areas, they'll have points, they'll have, you know, all crazy different shapes. But there are things called um, river stone, okay? River stone boulders are very round, all right? And they will roll. Um, sometimes actually, you know, when I've built ponds out of the river stone, I get some, you know, big, heavy, uh, round, you know, boulders, and they're kind of easier to move sometimes than the big flat ones, because you can literally roll them, push them and roll them in place, okay? <laughs> um, you know, the big flat ones, you know, you actually gotta pick up and physically, you know, set set down um, so yeah round boulders you know work too again round with another round you're gonna have a big hole in the bottom and a big hole on top okay so be aware you know to fill it now river stone comes in all different shapes and sizes okay <laughs> well I mean they're basically round but you can buy it from 3 8 little pea gravel okay to you know three quarter inch gravel to one inch gravel the inch to three inch gravel you know three to ten, six inch six to twelve inch i mean it comes all different and then boulders okay comes in all different um, sizes okay so again mixing up your sizes right you don't want to go to the store and just look at you know boulders that are this big and say okay i need 20 of those all right well you need more rock to fill in in between and all around it okay so you know maybe instead of buying 20 the same size buy 10 bigger ones right five medium ones five smaller ones and then a bunch of you know maybe two sizes you know a three quarter and a one to three inch and blend in with it okay um, usually when I've done stuff like that I also can use um, smaller either three quarter or like one inch um, river stone gravel to fit in between all those gaps and crevices in the rock, okay? So, and that holds true for any kind of boulders, okay? Whether I'm using moss rock or I'm using the field stone boulders or bigger pieces around the pond, instead of using smaller chunks of the same rock in between the cracks and crevices, we can fill it with gravel, okay? We just want to make sure that the gravel is not going to go through the holes and fall into the pond, okay? We got to kind of keep it sealed up enough that it holds the gravel, but um, once the gravel is held in place, we can fill up all around the rocks and the cracks and crevices all around the rock around the edge of the pond with gravel, three quarter inch, one inch, um, and that looks nice. And that allows you to, if you're gonna do gravel outside the pond to walk on, it kind of just blends right in. And that looks really nice too, okay? So, um, you know, I've got a bunch of pictures up here that I've been running in the back showing you all different things, okay? Um, you know, <laughs> it's endless, okay? It, the, the limits um, of what you can do is, it's endless. Different types of rock, right? Different look, um, more natural look more formal look, okay? We can do, um, I have pictures here. This is a natural uh, tumbled bluestone. Now the bluestone is cut, so it's very square, um, but it's a natural stone and it can be stacked up and used, you know, like this in a really formal type pond setting, okay? Um, instead of using, you know, rock, cap on the top we're using a limestone um, it's actually like a step uh, tread uh, on top here okay and they come in all different widths um, eight inch and you know, six inch eight inch 12 inch uh, these are 20 inch okay um, 18 and 20 inch um, nice big wide you know coping for the top of the pond um, so Thing. It's going to be blend in, so it just depends on the look that you're looking to create, right? A little more formal, a little more natural, a smaller stone stacked neatly or more formal, right? Um, 
a, a mixture of all different sized and shaped boulders all mixed around. It can be a little more natural looking, okay? And if you're doing larger boulders in your pond, around your pond, always buy some extra, <laughs> right? For the landscape around the pond. All right, if you can do that, if you're doing some planting, some landscaping around that pond as well, use the same rock, okay? So the rock that you have blended in around back here also matches all your pond, the rock work around your pond, and it kind of ties things in a little bit more, okay? Um, you know, there's, there's two kind of trends of thought um, when it comes to rock around the pond, okay? Um, a lot of the ponds that I build, and it's, it's basically because the clients see my pictures and they like it and that's what they want to do. Um, there tends to be a ring right around the edge of the pond. We're basically building a ring of rock around the edge of the pond. Now, some people like that. Some people don't because it looks like a ring around the pond rather than just gravel flowing in and flowing down into the water. I get that, okay? I totally get that. Um, but here's my thing. The reason why I build that ring around the pond is like I said, I'm bringing my liner up on a shelf, putting my rocks on the shelf in the pond, bringing my liner up behind it, all right? and backing it with rock, all right? Now, it's really more important for me, I feel, to bring that liner up off of the ground, okay? And keep that pond um, contained in itself. So, so if that liner's on the ground, like I said, I see it so many times where, you know, mulch and dirt and mud are running in, over that liner when it's on the ground and going right into the pond, all right? This keeps it totally separate. So any kind of, you know, fertilizers that are put down on the lawn or, or you know, pesticides or herbicides and anything that's sprayed around the pond is not going to leach down and wash into my pond in any way. My pond is totally separate and contained from the ground, the dirt, the mulch, the, everything, okay? Um, so there's a big advantage to that. Now, if you want to blend things in naturally around it, absolutely, that could be done in the landscape work later, right? You know, bring that liner up, put your rock in front, put your rock in back, have your pond contained and self-contained, okay? And then behind that rock, put your landscape fabric down, gravel it. Beautiful, okay? Um, you know, do some mulch, put your plants in, do some rock and gravel around it. Absolutely, okay? Be creative, you can do it. Um, but I really just don't like these ponds that it's just all gravel all around the pond. And you know, as you walk up on that gravel and then there's a hole with water in it. See, to me, that's not nice either, okay? And the problem I see with that, because I go to a lot of people's ponds that are like that, where the ponds are all built out of river stone, rock and gravel, okay? And all that gravel comes from the bottom of the pond, comes right up the side of the pond, comes over the liner, and, and out on the ground. And it's all round stone. And sometimes if there's, you know, landscape fabric down, where the pond liner comes up and comes out over the dirt, right, all over the ground, and all that round gravel is on top of that pond liner, as you walk up close to that pond and that liner starts going down, those rocks will roll on that pond liner. And it's, it gets kind of, it can get kind of slippery, uh, not slippery, but you can roll on that rock and you're rolling down into a hill, into a hole. So you have to be careful with that when you're walking around the pond. The other issue is with that, eventually a lot of that gravel around the top is going to end up down in the hole and you're going to end up with bare patches of liner around, around the edge of the pond. I've seen that a lot too. Um, I have one particular pond I've cleaned for years up uh, 
uh, but North Jersey that I didn't build, but I just, every spring I gotta go up and drain and clean it because there's no bottom drains or in it, it's all gravel. And each year, it seems that the pond gets shallower and shallower because it used to be two foot deep, but with all the rock and gravel that's around the sides and the shelves and everything else, that's all migrating itself down. So instead of being two feet deep, you know, now it's probably 18 inches deep and half of the rock around the sides is missing. All right, just something to keep in mind. All right, so I think we've covered a lot here. I hope I've given you some good ideas and, and uh, helped you out a little bit when it comes to choosing the rock and, and gravel and stuff for around your pond. I am not one to put the rock and gravel in the pond, okay? I'm, I, I don't do that. I see too many problems with that. Um, I use four inch bottom drains. I keep my ponds perfectly clean. No sediment, no build up of sludge or anything on the bottom, okay? Um, <laughs> if you have little questions about that, I have another video here on the difference between ponds with bottom drains and ponds with rock and gravel in them, okay? Um, th again, two different trends of thought, two different ways of doing things. I have never ever put rock and gravel on the bottom of my ponds, okay? Every pond I build has four inch bottom drains and it's gravity fed out to uh, gravity fed filter systems and I've never had an issue and I keep it that way. Too many ponds that get neglected all have rock and gravel in the bottom of them and I gotta go clean it and what a mess it is, all right? So check out that video, there's a lot of good stuff there. Again, food for thought, okay? Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, please hit the like button if it helped you out. Subscribe to the channel. I've got a ton of stuff here for you guys. And check out my website, okay, pondscapesandmore.com and uh, hopefully you can uh, enjoy all the pictures and information on there. And uh, I hope to see you back again in another video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.